What, what do you think was one of the most uh, craziest things you've seen during uh, your teenage years growing up? Um, during my teenage years growing up, um, one of my best friends, my homeboy Casper, from the neighborhood, um, he's from Haney Street, he's from my hood though, but different clique. Um, I was um, 15 when he came home. He came home from doing prison time. He was 22 years old and um, he really gravitated towards me. He saw that um, there was a lack of adults in my home, you know what I'm saying? He grew up in a pretty decent family, like I said, first generation born in this country, him too. And he was a hustler, you know, he was a grinder, he was a hustler and um, he taught me how to sell drugs when I was 15, 16, you know, to survive because there was no food in my fridge, you know what I'm saying? And to clothe myself and he basically um, really hands-on molded me instead of me watching, you know? He really took mm -hmm. the initiative to sit me down and be like, look, there's the type of people you don't trust, there's the type of people you gravitate to and this should be your goal at all times, you know? to um, stay with money in your pocket and stay strapped and stay on point. Well, like I said, back in the days, um, cruising was heavy on Whittier Boulevard. And one thing that he did do when he was around, he was like, he strapped me up, got me a pistol, and he was like, look, I, I'm on parole, so I'd rather you hold the burner and have my back. So I was like his little bodyguard at the time, and um, I was more than happy to oblige, you feel what I'm saying? So I would run around with him every day, day in, day out. You know, I'd be with him all day in, day out. And as I was going through, he was molding me and teaching me how to hustle and all that shit. Well, one day, um, one of his closest friends got out from prison, a fool that he had grown up with from my hood too, my homeboy Bruiser. And they decided to click up and go out. But obviously, I couldn't go the places they went. They were 22 years old. I'm 15. So when we met up at the park, the homie tells me, look, um, go play with the kids. When he meant go play with the kids was go play with the fools my age. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I was like, take the burner with you. He was like, nah, you're going to need it more than I am. You're out here running around, you know? So hold on to it. Don't trip. I'm good. So I'm like, all right. Um, you sure? He's like, yeah, you can't go where I'm going. I'm going to bars. I'm going to go out. Woo -woo. So sure enough, they went out. They went their way. And um, um, somehow along the line, they decided that they were going to go to Whittier Boulevard and try and pick up bitches. Because back then, you didn't need Instagram or Facebook to pick up bitches. Like, back then, all you needed was Whittier Boulevard and a fly-ass whip, and bitches were walking down the street throwing the pussy out. You know what I'm saying? Um, girls weren't afraid of physical fucking meeting like they are now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bitches is weak. Step your game up um, nowadays. So anyways, <laughs> so, um, dudes too, by the way. Um, so anyways, um, so they went to Whittier Boulevard, and um, somewhere along the line, they ran into my enemies, you know? And um, long story short, um, the enemies pulled up on my homeboys. They shot my homeboy Wine on the head. They shot my homeboy Casper, which was my best friend, twice in the chest. And they shot the homie Night Owl, I think three times in his body. So I just happened to pull up right after they get shot, like literally seconds after the gunfire. And when I pull up, I see bodies laid out. And it's all my homeboys, you know. Yeah. Um, I see Wino with a bullet in his head. I'm thinking he's dead already, you know. Um, the bullet was lodged, though, but I couldn't tell, you know what I'm saying. All I saw was a hole. And he was laid out. I see the homie Night Owl um, just grasping himself, but I could tell he's alive. And when I look at my best friend, he has a small putt on his chest, and um, he's confused. So I walk up to him, and I hold him in my arms, and, um, fuck. It's all good, dog. Um, I held him in my arms, and, um, yeah, so um, I held him in my arms, and um, he was mumbling. Um, he didn't really know what was going on, and um, I was trying to communicate with him, and he wouldn't answer me back. So the first thing that I thought to myself was, like, I need to go get his mom, and his mom lived, like, three blocks down the street. So I jumped in the car, and I drive to his house, and I knock on the door, and um, his mom comes out, and I tell her, hey, they shot Carlos, you know? So she tells me, take me over there. So I get her in the car that I'm in. Um, it was a stolen car at the time, and um, I got my gun, so I take her over there, and I'm able to put her in the ambulance with him. You know what I'm saying? They take off and then he died. So, yeah, that's probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. I've seen a lot of shit, but um, to me, that's like the most mind blowing, you know, that yeah. I can recall. How did it affect you? Um, it fucked me up. Um, it made me want to kill everybody, you know what I'm saying? It made me want to stay strapped for the rest of my life. To this day, I still suffer from paranoia. You know, I don't want to go out like that, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to go out like that, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it is what it is, you know? But, yeah, I think it's had an effect on me to this day. I want to talk about your music a little bit. And uh, at the beginning of the interview, you had mentioned that you were trying to bridge gaps. Yeah. Um, in what ways are you going about doing that? Um, I'm trying to get out there 
network more with um, Main Street people and more people that have been in the industry longer than myself and um, that aren't focused only on Chicano rap, that are focused on hip hop as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm trying to present um, a product, which is myself, that is um, more well-rounded as far as lyrical content, production sound, more of a progressive sound, more of a up-to-date image of what um, our culture represents to date. You know what I'm saying? Like, not the gimmicky, stereotype type of cholo, but somebody with aspiration, motivation, and um, dedication to the music and the art as a whole. You know what I'm saying? So instead of um, giving you something that is um, almost comical, I'm trying to give you something that's respectful. You know what I'm saying? And therefore, we gain the respect to be in the industry and work alongside of more um, um, established hip-hop artists. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I recently worked with Joe Moses, G Perico. Um, I have a track coming out with RJ. I'm going to release by the summer. I have a new track I'm dropping with Compton AD. I'm releasing within the next couple of days. Um, so I have projects lined up. You know what I'm saying? That... Um, are showing the ability for us to coexist together and make dope music, you know what I'm saying? So, and leave a blueprint to the people coming behind me to do so. I know other artists have done it before in the past, like, you know, you have Capone and Criminal that work with black artists and this and that and all the, the way they did it. But to me, um, it's a new day and people want more than just, like, it's a gimmick to me, the black and brown thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it doesn't have to be presented in that way. I think it just has to be presented as a project, you know what I mean, as dope music, you know what I'm saying, as dope artists collaborating with dope artists, you know what I mean, so that's the way I'm trying to make it, um, and, and just leave a, a a bridge in between that so that more artists are able to come through and and be successful like the way I'm doing it, you know. Okay, how, how did you hook up with uh, G Perico, uh, yeah, G Perico and Joe, Joe Moses? Um, I'm affiliated to um, two different labels, um, I'm signed to Fan First label, Fan First Empire, and I also work alongside of Peep CNT. So um, Peep C and T, the homie Doe Man, shout out to Doe Man. Um, he's been in the industry a long time behind the scenes. Um, he was the the one that um, wrapped the van, the Nipsey Hustle van, when I was out there for all Nipsey's um, um, functions that were going on after he passed away and all that stuff. Um, he's the one that took money out of his pocket, out of his own, and did it as a tribute to Nipsey because he was in the grind with a lot of these artists when they were upcoming, YG, Nipsey, um, Joe Moses, AD, um, a lot of these artists that are now popping, Ty Dolla Sign, um, Peep C and T, worked with them growing up. You know what I mean on the on the come up. Okay. So um, he still has ties into the music industry, obviously, and is tapped in to the streets. To where, when me and he, him worked together initially, he reached out to me, um, told me he respected my craft and wanted to work alongside of me. But the first thing he told me was this though: like, how do you feel about working with black artists? And I told him, shit, I'm open to it at any time or day. That's one of my goals to start doing. And um, just like other people, the first thing he told me was like, well, I'm just asking because it's always been a, a problem, you know, um, to make happen. But um, I'm tapped in and I have my resources and I have my, um, you know, my relationships with a lot of these artists. So, so, and so, and so, and so, and so. If you want to do it, let's make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So with him, um, he's given me a direct line into all, a lot of these artists, you know what I'm saying? And we've been working successfully since then together and um you know that's the boy that's part of my team you know what i mean that's a lot of a lot of the success i've had lately is because of him and fan first um has been the label behind it financially and um um believing in the craft and 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 helping me out with the projects too to be able to get those collaborations and do business you know what i mean on the business end of it and um just making sure that i have everything that i need all the resources studio time the right look everything you know what i'm saying so Shout out to the homie Steve, CEO of Fan First, my business partner. So with that team behind me, like right now, I haven't lost yet at nothing that I try to do. You know what I mean? Everything has been successful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's what's up. I mean, your videos, you got anything dropping soon? Yeah, I got a video with Swifty Blue dropping soon. Um, I'm trying to reach out to a lot more of the L.A. upcoming artists, you know what I'm saying? Because I haven't really done that. Um, I started off collaborating with a lot of artists from different counties. So now, right now, I'm really focused on the on the L.A. culture, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm fo I've got a single coming out with Swifty Blue. He's an upcoming artist out of um, Eastside Paramount. Um, I got a project coming out with um, Compton AD that I did on behalf of Peeps Entertainment. Um, it's a single called Gift Rap. We shot a video to that already. We're about to drop that. Um, I have a single on my own um, called Dangerous that I'm dropping alongside with um, um, Nueve. He's from Paris. Um, I have a single and video 
that I'm dropping also with RJ coming out. Um, and then um, I'm set to do a show April 27th with Joe Moses and RJ, downtown LA, at the Catch One. It's 1,200 people capacity. So um, it's uh, be hosted by DJ Charisma. Um, so yeah, I got a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, the shit don't stop. Like, I still got a lot going on. I have other events and shows that I'm that are pretty big too that I haven't necessarily booked yet, but they're already in the process of getting booked. Oh, okay. How did you get started in music? Um, I got started because um, I had a cousin that died. Um, my cousin Smiley from Bugar and Locals got murdered. And um, I was doing a, a prison term at that time. And, um, you know, I got notified that he had died of his murder. Um, he got shot nine times in the city of Bell Gardens by a rival gang member. Um, this is my closest cousin that was like my brother. You know, I've known him since I had any recognition in life. Um, yeah, he got shot nine times in the city of Bell Gardens. And when I got notified, I was in prison. So the prison administration was aware of me having a death in my family. So a prison... When prison gets a hold of this type of information, they try to give you resources to kind of grieve and mourn, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the time, prison overcrowding was so heavy that they couldn't give me the resources that I needed. So a counselor came to my cell and gave me a pad and pen and told me um, he didn't have time to see me every day, but he would recommend me to express how I felt on paper. And mm. I started writing music after that. Oh, so that's okay. basically how it started, yeah. Okay. And then uh, what was your first projects or music you put out? The first project I ever did was um, I got out of prison at that time and my homeboy Stomper, shout out to the homie Stomper from the hood. Um, he's affiliated with SKM right now, Conejo. Um, he was signed to High Power at the time. And um, when I got out, he always knew that I wanted to rap. So I got out, he was like, look, fool, like, let's, let's go meet up with Capone, you know what I'm saying? And um, let's, let's draw music. Um, he took me to a studio, it was called Cram Entertainment at the time, out of Whittier. Mm -hmm. And um, it was an independent label at the time. And we dropped a, uh, we dropped a song called I Keep It Gangsta. That was my ever first recorded song. It's me and my homeboy Stomper, you know what I mean? Long, long time ago. So oh, that was okay. the first time that I've been hooked ever since. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, 